but uh, I think the reason why we don't know is because we don't define violence correctly. We don't understand violence. So everybody in Nigeria, we see violence as a, how do I put it? Violence is just uh, something that involves physical harm or aggressiveness, you know, physical aggressiveness, you know, we, we always look at it only when there's an act that is physical, like fights. We know they see violence in its entirety, you know, in the complete scope of it. So these past few days, apart from even the killing of Debra in uh, in what was it called Sokoto, they killed a sound engineer in Lagos. There was a mob that killed him. Uh, now all Okada riders have been banned in Lagos in most local in six of the major local governments immediately for this death. Also, uh, there was the fighting in Abuja between the Okada riders again and uh, traders. So everybody has been... This violence is too much. And as usual, again, Nigerians missed the point completely. You know? We missed the point completely. And everybody just continue. Oh, is this northerners again? And it is this northerners are saying it is this southerners don't respect us. We miss the point yet again. You see, violence for me is anything that dehumanizes. Once you dehumanize, once you do any act, once you perpetuate any act that dehumanizes another person, you are violent. That for me is what violence means. When you do anything that dehumanizes another person, that means uh, we are violent. You know, we've done something. That's a violent act. So Nigerians go through a lot of violence every day, but the programming in the brain of the people. Do not let us see it as violence. The elites of Nigeria are a violent bunch. These people, they craze. They are wicked. All their acts are violent acts. You understand? They don't get any act, you know, that is non-violent. Any... I'm going to break it down for you people to know why Nigerians react violently to everything. I'll show to you that every aspect of our life, eh, had been programmed violently. Let us start with the first place that most poor people meet each other. I always talk about the marketplace in Africa. For some reason, our marketplace still holds the power. One is one of the most. It's one of the most original spaces in Africa. The African marketplace. You understand? Is one of the best places to go and see the situation and the state of African people. Everywhere you go in this world. Anywhere you go with people get small sense. There's what government call price control. Price control. There's a price for everything. You understand? If it's big, if it's small, if it's different, small, but there's a round ballpark for price. In Nigeria, our government don't put those things. There's no such thing. Nobody knows the price of anything. You can enter market. Your relationship, as soon as you enter market, the government don't so, by not putting price control, market checks and balances to coordinate our uh, uh, how do they put them? Our uh, economic and trade interactions, they leave us to haggle. You understand? So you must haggle to eat, to buy food. To, we'll begin haggle price. People don't understand the mindset of those things. It is not necessary for us to enter market and be haggling prices. You understand? You haggle. 
in the midst of haggling, you go to the, the call ourselves, we throw word for the ourselves. Not be fight, oh. You never did, not be physical violence. But wait till happen, you won't cheat me. You are saying the person is a cheat. Ah, Organa, you don't know. What you they talk? You want to say I be thief? You understand? 700, 300. To, ah, Organa, what for you? Oh, we've started. You understand? Now, if you see those two people haggling price, you will say, ah, ah. These people don't like to do anything gently. Gently. Why are people so... Now, big man go there inside your own car. They go in supermarket where they don't fix price for themselves. They only have good day. Inside supermarket, you see? They fix their own prices there. They agree that that is the price we must buy. Everybody, they enter, everybody buy. You know, they hear, can you hear haggling inside supermarket? But where we the people day, we don't deserve. And it is their job. The scales, the measuring pins for markets, all these things have been abused. There should be checks and balances, scales and measures. All these things are under government work. But you don't know that. You go buy one cup of rice for somewhere, not be one. Who they buy a cup of rice? If not be poverty, they make Nigerians haggle over a cup of rice. Why can't Nigerians just buy bags of rice? Packs of rice, like anywhere else in the world. So we must understand, say, in many of the things what we do, in many of our relationships, our government people, they make them important to them. See, they make us act violently. But we know the CM. You understand? You can enter bus one day, price of bus is 50 naira, you enter the next day, it's 70 naira. You and conductor will argue and go fight. But let me move away from this unseen hand. No, even good. Let me even put all the unseen hand out so that we can be seeing these things when they happen. You understand? Because throughout for Nigeria, we are constantly under a case of descending violence. Eh? In anthropology and sociology, there's something called ascending and descending violence. You understand? In the entirety of the black world. They don't give all our black leading blacks their, their assignment. See, the leading blacks, hmm, their assignment now to prevent ascending violence. Meaning, say, violence from the people towards the elites. Their job, the leading blacks all over this world, their job is to prevent that ascending violence. But you see, the descending violence from the elites to us is normalized. They sell, out, sell it to us as if it is normal. Just you going to work in the morning. For a Lagosian to go to work in the morning, sometimes you go sit down for traffic three hours, four hours. You don't know that that is violence? That is violence. Where is the transportation network? Where in this world do that the country is progressing? That they make workers suffer four hours to get to work? If you say they go work for another state, I can understand. You see, they go work for another country. Lagos to London flight is four, uh, six hours. Five hours 50 sometimes. Five hours 45. I don't enter five hours 45 to Paris before. From Lagos to Paris. Airplane. Then to go to work from Ikeja or Beba to VI. A ride that is normally 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Go to any country in the world. In China. In China. They are demolishing and rebuilding bridges overnight. That is how advanced built bridging is in the world today. In China, they are demolishing. I repeat, they are demolishing and rebuilding new bridges overnight. In Nigeria, you take 10 years to build one bridge. How long have they been building a uh, second Niger bridge? Fort Milan Bridge, now, uh, now since Tinubu time, the doctor can say they won't build Fort Milan Bridge. This is how many years of the same government. If to say in a different government, they rule Lagos, they talk and the different government. So the same party, maybe different name, but same personnel has been ruling Lagos under Tinubu since 1999. They can't deliver. They don't they build one monorail since 19 Bogorogbo. I went to Morocco. No, I went to Algeria. In a town called Casablanca, there. 
I know you must have watched the film. Uh -huh. That uh, city. So I went there. They had a fully integrated tram system. You know? You know what a tram is, right? Not, not a train, but not be train. A train where they move from middle of road like car. You understand? So there was a fully integrated tram system in Casablanca. In Algeria, fully integrated tram system. I said, Chai. I tell the promoter, as we inside the tram, because they try to see the town. I tell the guy, I say, man, this is a tram, fine, no. It's not taking like 30 years to build. Because the thing was on every corner, every street, it was fully integrated. The guy say, 30 years, no, for where? Say, now like 18 months, they take build everything. And why it take long and through to the Casablanca that hills, the place that hilly, mountain, valley. He said to the topography, to the route for the tram to be passing. That was what actually took time. Not thing. I put her for head. I put her for head though, because Lagos is flat. <laughs> Mostly. So this is violence. When this elite, both business and political, allow us to sit in traffic four hours a day of your life. Some people don't even see their children because of work. Hmm? When people are charging you more than they pay you for services, that is an act of violence. You don't know. When you are made to dehumanize yourself, because when you begin thief, steal, do fraud, lie, cut corner, uh, launder money, all these things that they do in civil service, in the banks, in the businesses in Nigeria, so that the workers of those businesses can begin to afford the things that that business is doing. You understand that the things, the business, you are working in a place to afford what that place is offering. You are stealing from that place. You have to be helping your guys steal from that place. From us. Don't you know that that's a violent act towards you? You don't know that? You are being violated when your salary is not matching the rent of the town you are living in and they expect you to get to, to work on time. Your guy expects you to get to work on time. May you know late. But the salary he's paying you cannot pay rent in that area that his office is. He knows that you cannot, you cannot afford to live close enough to come to work on time. You are working in VI, you cannot even afford to live in Ikeja. He knows you have to be coming from Moway, Bega, Songo to come and work for him every day. He doesn't care. The food they sell, everything. You think that's not violent? You sit down for your house, your bank, go they take money inside your account. Money where you know where you know spend. Money where they know they're entitled to. You think that's not a violent act? You think that's not a violent act? Now the violence, be, that is the violence gone, gone. Now, the day before yesterday, they announced, they catch attorney general, uh, accountant general of the federation. Accountant general of the federation stole 80 billion naira. They said they, uh, they arrest her for 80 billion naira fraud, brothers and sisters. If you spend 1 million naira every day, if they spend one million naira every day, eh? Two hundred years, you never finish eighty billion. In two hundred years, you never finish eighty billion. Calculate them. One million a day. Every year is three hundred and sixty-five million a year. Now you go spend. Calculate them. Two hundred years, you never finish eighty billion. You still get billions left after two hundred years of spending money like that. You still have billions left. How much as soon they look for? As soon as they come pay 200 billion into their account for them to work, for them to begin to teach our children again that they are owing them 200 billion. They want to see the money. One person don't thief 80 billion for this country, sit down on top. Our children cannot go to school. People are dying on the street from hunger. You don't understand what violence is, man. You don't understand yet. So you don't know what thing they happen to you. You don't know why they behave the way they behave, Seth. You don't know why you lash out. And this morning, you don't want to kill somebody. You don't know why. Because every day, 
every day you are being violated. But nobody they tell you. But you, they, your body, they feel them. You see all of us when you hear this 80 billion story, our brain not the face. We, we are all angry hearing this story. But they're not telling us we can't do anything about it. There's no justice. So everybody, they load all these things. You go sit down for traffic. Down for go to drive anyhow. Wah, wah. No control. Police is not there to control traffic. They don't do anything. They allow the bad people among us because even though they suffer, some people when they among us they suffer are oppressors in waiting. They know that no society is good people, so they allow those bad people among us. They go to side traffic. They drive any out. They, they cut corner. They go there for lane when they supposed to make you turn. They go there go, ah, pass police when they do anything. You understand? So you go to vet because you don't get justice. You go there for traffic light like a normal person. The way they write, turn to a uh, uh, green before you pass. Then go call, they go pass. Wah! Make you look like a fool. Police go let them pass. Nobody goes do anything. They know what they're doing. Now, only one man. Thief, uh, yesterday, they go cut Patricia Ete. That woman, on the thief, Tete. In case you don't know, like she went thief. Uh, uh, how many uh, money they give her that time? God, she, she, when they make her speaker, she not last six months for the speaker. When she pack money, they see give that kind of woman another work again to pack all that money. Come they arrest her. How many times person go thief before they not say a thief? Now so when Desiani be transport minister, they indict her for sending for over eight hundred billion for the uh, Bini uh, Shagamu Express. They indicted her already. That kind of same person put as a uh, minister of petrol. Then they begin complain. Say she thief money for ministry. No. Why do people steal money that they cannot spend in their life? Why? So I'm telling you, it is not just ordinary. Don't be saying people the thief. This is not just stealing, right? This is not just stealing. People, they steal money where they no need. Where they affect the life of other people. Where they dehumanize other people. Where they make other people live like animal. Money was supposed to bring dignity into the life of African people. They go thief farm even though they don't need them. Why are you 80 billion? I say, if they spend 1 million a day, so all these things happening to us already. With the bottle I'm in, everybody is already angry because there's no justice. We're all already angry. So I'm telling you, this is why everybody is lashing out. This is why there's so much violence everywhere. They'll come begin to add religious propaganda on top. You see, let me tell you people something. Nobody in this world can tell me that any religion that evangelize is not violent. Once a religion, they preach their gospel, once they try to spread, once they believe, say this religion, everybody must hear them. Everybody must embrace them. Once your religion believes that, your religion is violent, that is a violent statement. When your religion says, we are the chosen one, for you to be child of God, you must become like us, the chosen. We are chosen. That means say everybody else is not chosen. That's what I'm trying to teach African people. Where on no one here, they want they don't brainwash all of us. So no one hear the truth, especially when it comes to this religion, religious violence in the country. Right. It is impossible for anybody to say they are chosen and not be violent. You see, we Africans, we always mistake ourselves for something. We say, oh, they, they uh, respect the unbeliever. Unbeliever. They'll say, uh, uh, Mohammed says you should protect the unbeliever. Uh, Christians uh, protect the unbeliever. Unbe you see that word unbeliever? It is not representative of Africans in the scriptures. When you hear unbeliever, 
in any of the Abrahamic religious texts, either Islam, Judaism, or Christianity. When they use the word unbeliever, they mean themselves, those brothers, the Jews, the Christians, and the Arabs. They mean themselves. They are talking about themselves. The Jew, when they say unbeliever, it means Christian and Muslim. I mean, it means Christian and Muslim, the Jew. When the Christian says unbeliever, it means Jews and Muslims. When the Muslim says unbeliever, they mean Christians and Jews. You see, the rest of us, we are pagans, infidel, heathen, and savages. Listen, I repeat. We are not unbelievers. We Africans are infidels, pagans, savages, and heathen. Those are the word and kafir. Those are the word for African people in this culture. We are not the unbelievers. So when they say protect the unbeliever, they are not talking about us. What do they say about the infidel? Read all the old Christian book. All the whole a Islamic book and hear what he said about the infidel. That is why me, I know, say it is dangerous. Because I know what they are saying about me. I know I am their savage. I am their heathen. I am the infidel. I am the pagan. Why would Muslims be lying here in Africa in this day and age? Why would Christians be lying here in Africa in this day and age? After all the blood of our ancestors that you spilled on the floor. After the millions of Africans that you killed, they are here trying to lie to us today. Let me explain to you. Christianity and Islam in Africa, they are guests. Foreign religions, they are guests. Africa is not their home. Nobody can tell me that Christianity and Islam is african they are guests they are our guests now let me tell you if you have a guest in your house hmm, and that guest you accept them when he comes inside your house you don't have to do what he like but the guests they tell you because they believe if you are yourself you are going to hell they want to save you they want christians want to save you uh, muslims want to enlighten you they say i must change you to themselves so you are staying with somebody in your it's your house so this is your house. You are staying with somebody in your house. And every day the person is telling you, ah, I don't like the way you eat. I don't like the way you sleep. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you dress. I don't like the way you pray. I don't like the way you stay with your woman. I don't like the way your wife behaves. I don't like the way your wife dress. I don't like the way your children dress. I don't like the way... Every day they continue to tell you, you must change. You must adjust. You must say, there is no way there will not be conflict. It is either you say, ah, I beg, I beg, I don't tire, I don't tire. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I agree, I agree. Oh, yeah. oh, God, what's it happen? What's it be all this? There must be conflict. That's why I keep telling you there's no way any Abrahamic religion can tell you that it is non violent because it seeks to change. And for anything to change, anything it must come into conflict. Change is not easy. To become, there must be conflict. So this is normal sense. In this, our country, we are going through Islamic huh, and Christian Cold War. There's Islamic and Christian Cold War happening in Nigeria. Where these two factions cannot openly declare war, but in every space of African life that they control, they try to make sure that the Africans in that life constantly are against each other. I don't want anybody to be telling me how any religion in Nigeria is not violent. Nobody should be telling me that because there's too much evidence. There's too much evidence in this Nigeria. But as I said to us, we need to take our life serious. So things might be killing people who we'll overlook it because now people, the African people, they die. It doesn't matter. There's a religious cold war going on in this country. That's why anywhere the Muslim they reign, if I don't talk, anywhere Muslim they reign, Nasinio Alaji, 
Now be director. Anywhere Christians they reign. Now senior pastor. Now be director. Is there any Christian place with Muslim in charge? Or any Muslim space with Christian in charge? Any meeting we are having, Christians must pray. Any place Muslims are, Muslims must pray there in our country, by force, by fire. The violence is what can be called like a cold war in this country. So, you know what cold war is? Cold war means, say, we not go like America and Russia, right? I mean, bind you. We are sleeping in our houses. Church go holla for five in the morning. Praise the on top of. When I say for Kalakuta for my dad's house, there was a church next to us, right? Five a.m. This church had maybe twenty people. No, no, reach twenty. Then if I if there is twenty, make a break. I swear on my father's grave. This congregation for this church, they no reach twenty. Maybe thirteen people. They go they holla with loudspeaker and they can hear themselves easily. They go they holla with loudspeaker. Nobody can sleep. What is that church saying? They say if you don't support what they are doing, you don't deserve sleep. If you don't support what that church is praying, that early money, you do not deserve sleep. That's violence. I don't think you people don't understand. See, onti o da o da. Onti o da ko da. What is not good is not good. If you accept it small, eh? I think that, oh, it's only this small that I have accepted. I have not accepted the big part of it. That small, you will see that it is big. That small, it say I said, you will see that it is big. That the freeze Preaching against Titan had issues with Oyedeko. I've forgotten one other pastor's name. I don't know his name. One the pastor come out immediately say, "Ingo killed that the freeze." I be that one too now. So kill that the freeze. And as many northern Muslims decrease. See, northern Muslims, northern Christians, southern Muslims, southern, there's a violence there. And you cannot keep denying it. And it comes from the top down. That kind of violence comes from the top down. So we Nigerians, we are constantly under violence acts. We are constantly on that violent act and we don't get justice you see that's the problem so everybody all these things they happen to us constantly it happens to us we bottle it up and once a while there will be a trigger and the trigger that they not set the trigger the ethnic trigger the religious trigger they set it the ethnic and religious triggers they set it so, bam, like this. We have gone through, we go explode on ourselves. You, you understand? And this is what I want people to always see. That this violence is descending. It's always descending. I want to ask the Igbo traders. Right? We decide, say, the answer. You know, if this is what really happened, they say, okay, somebody be on top of a cadaver. Somebody does have a Okada, and the person died, and they attack the Okadas in the area. Okada said, "Go group, attack them back." Okay, where is that spirit, right? When the politicians that put bad road, the bad roads that they used to put good traffic lights and employ traffic uh, conductors to make sure that this kind of, I they tell you, I say, you say UK people like to drive like normal people need. Do you think Americans like to drive normally and follow the law? Driving is a risky thing. Go to UK. 
They use camera. They watch every road with camera to keep people in check when they drive because they know it is people. People they fuck up on top of steering way way. If you care about your people, you have to police traffic. You have to police traffic seriously. Go and look at the statistics of how people used to die in traffic in the UK. People used to die anyhow every day on their motorway, just dying in accidents. The UK has to go tough. Bring camera, speed camera. I say if you pass speed, you go catch a picture. They watch road. If you take one way, if you do any madness, they are seeing you. They are coming for you immediately. But here, there's no such thing. They allow for madness to reign. All these things is violent act against us. Our undignified living. You tell your husband, I go take light. Go blow your appliances. Nobody to hold responsible. There's so much violence in every aspect of our interaction with our states. Go to any civil service office to go and try and get any kind of uh, documentation. The bureaucracy, the way they talk to you, the snobbing, is all act of violence against us. Because it is not supposed to be so. We know they're supposed to be our servants to render services to us. But instead, they disgrace you if you don't have money. Ask you to go and bring money before they answer. You do as if you are not human being. Is it our relationship with the police? How they treat us? Violence in our state, right? Violence in this country. The political and business elite of this country they don't comprise you, they don't join her to make sure say everything that happens. So now uh, Okada people gather themselves back, they go burn uh Igbo people, this thing. I would always wonder when I would do for my house. Why are we so quick to organize for violence against ourselves? Very quick. Now, because they don't put those trigger, so you see the sending violence as power, as positive, for they can be bragging to you while being violent, telling you how they need come to life to suffer. You know, so we will they suffer. Now we come life come suffer. Somebody is stealing money that is killing people, right? Because when you thief money, you're supposed to build road. People will die for that road, not your fault. This money with accountant general, this 80 billion, where they see this accountant general just chop. Money that you cannot spend. If you spend 1 million naira every day for 200 years, you cannot finish it. Eh? You understand? How many schools could I build? How many hospitals? How many nurses could he train? In fact, how well would that help in increasing the salaries of people that work in our service? public service sector. Okada Riders, the most violent gang in Nigeria. I wonder. If you want your picking to be Okada Rider here, raise up your hand. I'm sure nobody here want their child to be Okada rider. See, when Lagos banned Okada some years ago, people come with me, I know, uh, Okada people want, want protest, want you to join the protest, want you to say something. I say, I can never fight for people to be Okada rider. I can never fight for anybody to be an Okada rider. You know why? Because I will never want my child to be an Okada rider. I only fight for the things that I want for my children. Things that I want for myself, those are the things I fight for. I will never fight for an African to be an Okada rider because 
I know that an Okada rider life is an undignified life. It's a life without dignity. They keep selling this kind of dignified poverty. When we know there's no such thing like dignified poverty. Because even people that work in banks have to become criminals to make ends meet. They're already collecting 500,000 a month. 400,000 a month, some 800,000 a month. They still launder money to make ends meet, to bring dignity to their life, to pay the rent in the area that they're supposed to be staying, to pay the school fees that their children are supposed to be paying, to buy their wives what their wives need, to go on holiday with their family, to live, to see the world. They have to engage in, in undignified practices that destroy their soul. This is bankers, oil workers, civil servants, accountant general. So, what about Okada Ryder? How far away from his dignity is he? How far away from his dignity? To be an Okada Ryder, the state must have been so violent to you. The state must have stripped you of everything you believe that you could ever be. Because you can go to all the primary schools in the world, in Africa today, forget Nigeria. Go to every primary school in the world. No child will tell you I want to grow up and be your Kada rider. No child. This is not what anybody dream of doing. So when a man decides to start riding Okada, it means something has happened to his existence. Something has happened to his life. Something has dehumanized him. So these are the things that we as Africans must dismantle if we want to remove violence from our society. You cannot tell me that people that killed Deborah are ignorant. She was killed in a university, for Christ's sakes. Christina Olua Shesin was killed in a school as well. This is not a matter of illiteracy or illiterate. No. No, nobody should tell you that. 34 lawyers went to defend the killers. They all graduate from somewhere. All went to law school to become lawyer. Now, President Buhari... Did not come to Lagos to visit the family of Dave and his children. Buhari did not go to uh, Niger State to see the parents of Deborah. I've not seen in any news that any delegation from the government, any aspirant has gone to Dave or Deborah's place. In our own country, one hour flight. But Buhari yesterday has left to UAE to give condolence, for condolence visit because somebody died there. Their president died there. Until a citizen of Nigeria is more important to the Nigerian president than another country's president, we are not ready here. We are not ready for anything here. You see, that is violence. When you are talking of violence, there's not there's few things in the world that is more violent than your president disregarding. His own citizens like that. All these things they pay no now. Nigerians go they talk lies, say we no send. Nobody send this country. We just want Japa. We just want Ja. It's a lie. There is no Nigerian that anything happening in this country. No, they pay now. If they pay no now. Fact, Gara. I can state every Nigerian, no matter where you are in this world, even the ones we don't run. When you see negative news about Nigeria. In fact, that because they pain you, you just say, I beg, I forget that country, John. I don't disturb myself. It's a lie. You are disturbing yourself. Many of you are, many of you have drinking problem because of how much you love Nigeria. That's why many of you cannot even sleep in your house. You have to be drinking every night because Nigeria matter, they give you stress. If you stay awake, you will become a revolutionary. So instead of you to become a revolutionary, you are becoming a drunkard. Hey, all the time outside, living life. Hey, not lie. 
Now Nigeria must have to worry you. Now the frustrations of this country, they drive you go drink. Many of us are drunkards in this country because of the frustration of this country. I cannot be frustrated about something you don't care about. What are you saying? What are you saying? So instead of falling to alcohol, it's time to fall into revolution. To revolutionize ourselves, our minds. Because you see, to free ourselves from this violence, we don't need to be violent. All we need to be is to organize aggressively. All we need to do is to organize ourselves aggressively away from the politics of these people, this violent politics. It is that violence from the top that is affecting that Okada man at the bottom. It is not because he's a northerner. Okay? There's nothing special about northerners or southerners. We are under a violent system that is violent to us in every relation. Even the teachers and students in public schools, they flog the students. Every interaction we have with the state is violent, man. When we are children in public school, the teacher will flog you, man. You are flogging a child. Go to all these uh, schools all over the country, in the north, Muslim school, Christian school, flogging African children like animals. Normalizing violence as a way. See, when you are flogging children in a classroom to make them learn, you are flogging them to make them behave. You are flogging them to make them have respect. To make them, all you are doing, you are not, none of that is doing anything you want it to do. All you are doing is saying to that child that violence, you are normalizing violence. You are letting the child know violence is the way to have your way. Violence is the way to make anything work. If you want to, instead of dialogue, right? Because those teachers can be patient with the children and dialogue with that child and talk to the child. A child! They're going to flog us. They don't know all you are doing is normalizing violence. Finish! If flogging can make any country great, Nigeria will be the greatest country in the world. If flogging can make any country great, Nigeria will be the greatest country in the motherfucking world. But all flogging does is normalize violence. Every institution in this country normalizes violence. You go to church, all my enemies die by fire, die, die. All these things, you don't know you are manifesting. You don't know what you are manifesting. Go to white churches in America. Go to white churches in England. Do white people not have enemies? You are the only one with enemies. Go in white churches. You never hear this kind of violent preaching. They'll be saying they want their enemies to have peace. They, that's what they love everybody. They preach love and acceptance. They, go and, and sweat down all these dwell all things. Go all these white pens. Even the white Pentecostal churches. Don't go to the white Catholic church. Don't go to all the, that one, the level of preaching is too much. Even white Pentecostal churches. Go and see if they are shouting, Zeus, all worshippers of Jupiter, all Athena, anybody following Venus. Go and see if they are doing that. Die! Fire! Fire! Go and see if they are doing it. They are normalizing violence to you. The same way they normalize it in your classroom as a child. All the way to secondary school where they flog you, making you feel as if it's only through violence. I be Christians, you know, they won't tell me say they know they pray me their enemies die by fire. It is your prayer that is your innermost wish. So if your prayer is violent, how can you tell me that you, you are not violent? The reason you cannot manifest your spiritual violence. In the physical world must be that something is stopping you and yes something is stopping you the system of the south yes the south doesn't have that kind of system at least not anymore at least not anymore so we must stop all these pretense and lies that we tell ourselves as if violence is from one region or from one religion only. Violence in Nigeria is not from one region or one religion only. 
Violence is the system of Nigeria. Violence is the system of Nigeria. You cannot name to me one industry in this country, one institution in this country that does not interact with Nigerian people in a violent way. That does not normalize violence in our mindset and our sense and our brain and our existence. This is what they do. And that's why all Nigerians, young and old, pure, rich or poor, all of us believe that violence is the only way to make our, get our points across. We all feel disenfranchised. We all feel that we are being cheated, that there is no justice. And that is the bedrock, that is the fertile ground for all violence. And until we Nigerian people remove the ability of our elites to constantly bar this barrage of descending violence that we embrace and praise, you understand, all these violent people at the top of our system and continue to perpetuate violence from their pulpit, from their mosque, from their office, from their government office, from their industry, from their factory, constant violence on the Nigerian people, and we are quiet. Let me tell you, we are going to see more bloodshed. Until we begin to encourage ascending violence, Resistance to oppression. That is ascending violence. And they don't want you to resist your oppression. They want you to accept it lying down. So that they can continue descending violence in your life. Every aspect of your life. So we must stop blaming any religion and blaming any religion and see violence for what it truly is in our society. A tool of the elite to keep control of our society. Before there was Boko Haram killing us, it was the Nigerian army themselves that went to commit genocide in Odi, commit genocide in Zakibian. That's not Boko Haram. So there's no institution in Nigeria that does not relate to the Nigerian people. If our army that is sworn to defend the citizens, defend the citizens of this country, can still be given order to kill same citizens. What, why are we complaining about Boko Haram? Violence is the order of the day. And we Nigerian people must organize to resist oppression with ascending violence. We must not allow descending violence to continue to dominate and ruin our lives and destroy our humanity to the extent that we cannot dialogue over 100 Naira. 100 Naira can no longer, Africans cannot dialogue with themselves over 100 Naira. We must choose violence. We must choose violence. It, and the blame lies squarely with the elites of this country. Because only the elites elite of this country they have, the, and they have the influence, the money, the power to re-educate their nation. You see, burning of people, lynching, is something that we learned from Europeans. Lynch is a human being, William Lynch. Google him up. He's the one that was talking about how to control black people. Brought lynching to bring fear into us. Now, you both... The, Africa never see where they born human being before to Yubo come. Go and look at the medieval laws of Europe and America. When King Nzinga, right, of Bukongo, saw the Portuguese for the first time and read their laws, he laughed at the Portuguese people. The harbor, very soon in your country, you will make law against people breathing. You know? This is how violent European laws were in the medieval time. They went through the Renaissance when they were under church and state. When the church was controlling Europe, the laws of the Bible applied in Europe. Medieval laws, they called them. Google it. See how violent these kind of crazy laws and punishments that they had. The punishment, mad. They brought it here, started teaching us to behave like that to ourselves. Now, all the people that taught Africans these things, they spent billions of dollars and pounds to program our brain. If, 
trillions and trillions, in fact, in today's currency. Hundreds of thousands of manpower was shipped to Africa to teach us these negative things. Today that everybody... I'm ending this with a question. We train us. How about our own soul business and why is this thing stop in retraining and re-educating that there are people who need this re-education thank you very much for joining this for joining me here on my youtube page uh Please don't forget to subscribe to this page, you know, so as I put more shows, this is not part of the show, this is just us having a discussion that I feel we have to have today. Uh, please tell your friends about this page so that we can grow the numbers and we can go on this journey of our total liberation together, Africa. Don't forget to subscribe.